Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Dr. Anam Gul and today we are going to discuss about cell culture laboratory. This is my introduction. I'm working as assistant professor at Dow College of Biotechnology, Dow University of Health Sciences. Before proceeding, um, Towards the lecture, uh, I would like to discuss today's lecture learning objectives. At the end of this lecture, uh, you, would be, you would be able to understand the basic requirements of cell culture lab and you will be able to know the purpose of each equipment that has been used in cell culture laboratory. Uh, you, will be have the, uh, you will be having basic understanding of cell culture lab design. So. Starting with the basic equipments that are used in cell culture laboratory, first and uh, the most important uh, equipment uh, which is mandatory for any cell culture lab is the cell culture hood or you can say biological safety cabinet, laminar flow hood. So uh, this is one of the major and the most important equipment without which you will not be able to do the sterile culturing. Second is incubator. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, humid carbon dioxide incubator is recommended. And third is water bath because whenever you are uh, using uh, the media or FPS, strypsin or any other uh, growth factors, any other additives in your media, you need to maintain the temperature of that media close to 37 degrees centigrade uh, for most of the cells uh, that are of uh, mammalian origin or in uh, most of the murine origin cell lines also their required temperature for uh, optimal growth is 37 degrees centigrade. So you need to maintain your cells at 37 degrees centigrade and for that you need to put all your media and uh, all the uh, chemicals that you are using uh, with your cells in water bath so that it can achieve uh, that temperature requirement before uh, using it on uh, your cells. Then we have centrifuge because uh, uh, in order to pellet down your cells you need to have a centrifugation facility um, in your cell culture laboratory. You should have functional freezers and refrigerators in your cell culture lab because uh, most of the media they are uh, stored at four to eight degree centigrade temperature and uh, likewise the serum and trypsin and some other required uh, reagents are stored at minus 20 degree centigrade. So you need to have uh, these uh, freezing and refrigeration facilities in your cell culture laboratory. Then we have a hemocytometer or we have automated cell counters that are required in cell culture lab in order to uh, count the viable uh, cells. Inverted microscope is required uh, so that you can visualize your, uh, the status of your cells, whether they are contaminated, whether they are in healthy status, their morphology. So you can observe that under microscope. This, that is why it is also one of the most uh, important or basic equipment uh, that has been uh, used in cell culture laboratory. Uh, then we need uh, proper liquid nitrogen freezers uh, or cryo storage containers uh, because uh, you need to store your cells at different passage numbers as backup uh, storage because you cannot grow your cells all the time when you are not doing any experiment or when you need those cells later on after two months, three months or six months, you need to store uh, your uh, cells at cryo conditions. Uh, so for that liquid nitrogen freezers are ideal or cryogenic uh, containers are ideal. So uh, if you have uh, ample space then you can uh, place these liquid nitrogen freezers in your cell culture lab. But if you have a small area then you can designate a separate uh, room for uh, this uh, facility, liquid nitrogen facility. And uh, most of the equipment, uh, most of the consumables that are used in cell culture lab are disposable, but some of uh, the uh, instruments or some of the uh, glasswares uh, 
are uh, that has been used in cell culture laboratory need to be sterilized before uh, using uh, before utilization so you need to autoclave all those stuff and for that you will be needing autoclave same uh, as i've discussed about the liquid nitrogen freezers if you do not have uh, space available in your cell culture lab then you can uh, place uh, the sterilizers in a separate room and you can sterilize your stuff over there and but if you have space you can place it in your cell culture laboratory so starting with the uh, first basic equipment uh, that has been used in cell culture lab is the cell culture hood the simplest and most economical way to provide aseptic conditions is to use a biological safety cabinet and if we categorize these safety cabinets uh, we have three categories which is class 1 2 and 3 and it uh, depends on your uh, need of your experiment uh, whether you want uh, your product safety you want environment safety or you want uh, personal safety or you want all three categories so it depends on your requirement whether you will be using class 1 safety cabinet 2 or 3 this is the basic uh, cell culture hood uh, pictorial representation you can say that uh, it includes hipa filter at the top of the safety cabinet we have a section uh, where blower is present and uh, laminated glass is present and the sash of uh, biological safety cabinet uh there is a particular level uh till that point you can raise the uh sash otherwise it will start beeping because it will disturb the air flow and if it will disturb the air flow it will create a contamination problem your sterility will be disturbed we have a lcd uh, digital display panel where all the settings uh, will be displayed including the um, air flow uh, velocity and uh, this is the leveling uh, caster and uh, it has wheels in it so you can easily move and adjust uh, the position of the safety cabinet and then you can lock it so that it is uh, stably placed at one point and here uh, as you can see there are some red arrows and there are some blue arrows so as i was discussing in this picture that at the top we have hipa filter so this is the point where uh, we have a blower and a hipa filter present so the room air which is the contaminated air uh, indicated by red in color it will enter into the safety cabinet it will move from here and you can see a red arrow here also it will move from uh, this direction towards the back of the safety cabinet and from the back of the safety cabinet with the help of blower then it will pass on through the hipa filter and after passing through the hipa filter the air that will be drawn into the safety cabinet towards the workstation will be blue in color as represented over here because it will be a clean air that has been passed through the hipa filter and similarly the air that has been going out of the safety cabinet is also blue because it has been passed through the hipa filter so uh, the air that has been um, releasing into the environment is also uh, clean air so this is the basic uh, air flow pattern uh, but it will uh, differ according to the uh, types of safety cabinets class 1 2 and 3 that i'll be discussing uh, in the next few slides so this is the classification of uh, biological safety cabinet and it includes class 1 biological uh, uh, safety cabinet that includes the bio safety level 1 2 and 3 and the protection that it provides its personal uh, protection and environmental protection only and because of this it uh, can be used for low to moderate risk biological agents similarly class 2 safety cabinet also provides uh, all three uh, basic levels of uh, bio safety uh, but in addition to the environment and personal protection class 2 biological safety cabinets they also provide product protection so uh, here also low to moderate risk biological agents can be easily handled 
and uh, in the last category which is class 3 it provides highest level of containment or biosafety level that is class 4 and uh, it is total containment cabinets and we can handle uh, different uh, biological agents that are high risk agents. So uh, this is the basic categorization of biological safety cabinet and then in the next few slides I will be discussing in detail about uh, the type of protection that uh, these safety cabinets are providing. Talking about uh, biosafety cabinet class 1, this is the airflow pattern of biosafety cabinet class 1. This is called a ventilated cabinet that provides personal and environmental protection. Class 1 BSCs, they are designed uh, with an open front with inward airflow that provides personal uh, protection and HEPA filtered outward airflow that provides environmental protection. So because this is HEPA filtered, so the air that is going into the environment is filtered air and in this way we are, uh, the environment is protected and because the airflow is only inward, why? Because the unfiltered air inside the safety cabinet is under negative pressure. So because of the negative pressure, the air cannot move uh, back towards the user. So in this way, the user is protected. So if you are working on some uh, biological agents that do not require uh, protection uh, of, the, uh, of that particular agent, but you need to uh, have the personal protection and environmental protection, then you can opt for biosafety cabinet class 1. In comparison to biosafety cabinet class 1, uh, class 2 uh, cabinets are further divided into uh, different types based on their construction, their airflow pattern and uh, the exhaust systems they have. So these types include class uh, 2A1, A2, uh, B1, B2 and C1. We will be discussing all these categories one by one in the next few slides. So uh, this is class 2 type A2 safety cabinet. Uh, the reason why I've mentioned only class 2 type A2 because in most of the cell culture labs you will find class 2 type A2 because the uh, airflow pattern of uh, type A1 and A2 is similar, the only difference is the inward airflow velocity. Uh, in A1, it is uh, 75 uh, feet per minute minimum airflow velocity and in type A2, it is 100 feet per minute uh, inward airflow velocity. So nowadays, you will rarely uh, find type A1 in any cell culture lab. Mostly you will find A2 or uh, the other uh, categories of class 2 safety cabinets. So uh, talking about the airflow pattern of type A2, uh, the room air will enter from here. Uh, the green arrow indicates the room air and uh, obviously the room air will be contaminated. The contaminated air will move from the back of the safety cabinet with the help of blower. Uh, it will move inside uh, the workstation but after passing through the HEPA filter. So HEPA filtered clean air will move inside the uh, safety cabinet and if you are working with uh, any uh, biological agent which is uh, infectious or hazardous so obviously this area will be contaminated that is why it has been showing with the red arrows but what will happen that this uh, area is under negative pressure so the air will not move towards the user so it is providing the user or the personal protection and it is providing the environmental protection because HEPA filtered air is moving outside and it is providing the product protection also because HEPA filtered air is moving inside the safety cabinet. Room air is not directly uh, entering into the safety cabinet. It is moving because of uh, the pressure, uh, the grill over here, the air is moving inside and it will move towards the back of the safety cabinet and then HEPA filtered air will move inside the safety cabinet for your product protection. And in this type of cabinet, uh, approximately 60 to 70% of the contaminated air, it will uh, be recycled and pushed back into the workstation 
uh, in the chamber through the downward HEPA filter. And almost 30 to 40 percent uh, contaminated air will move into the environment after passing through the HEPA filters. So this is the basic uh, airflow pattern of uh, biosafety cabinet class 2 type A2. Talking about type B1 and B2 uh, categories of class 2 uh, biological safety cabinet. So uh, for type B1 and B2, uh, the safety cabinet, uh, the difference between these two safety cabinet is the air that has been exhausted out of the cabinet and uh, which is 70% for B1 and 100% for B2. And these uh, cabinets, they are best uh, used for applications that require larger quantities of volatile chemicals uh, and uh, radionucleotides, although uh, the restrictions may still apply, but type B uh, class 2 biological safety cabinets must be connected to the building's exhaust system to protect the user from the vapors and gases that has been used that are being used and because none of the air is uh, recirculated in type B2 specifically talking about uh, type B2 because here 100 percent of the air that has been entered into the cabinet is being exhausted they are also known as total exhaust cabinets so because none of the air is recirculated in uh, type B2, these cabinets are best to be used for tasks involving the release of chemical vapors. Type C1 cabinets are similar to type B uh, cabinets in their working mechanism, but these are designed to reduce the operating cost and they add flexibility to the laboratories. These cabinets, they work by using the single pass airflow system where the cabinets uh, move the air by mixing it with the downflow air separated into columns for recirculation. The air above the workstation, it is drawn with a second fan. If I want to show it over here, this is the second fan. Uh, so the air uh, above the workstation, it is move uh, towards the back of the cabinet and uh, the contaminated air it is uh, moving uh, from this area and it will move to the exhaust system with uh, a HEPA filter and the filtered air is passing on into the environment. In this way the cabinet provides protection to the environment uh, operator and uh, the workstation or the biological material. And these type C cabinets, they are different from type A cabinets as they use a single pass airflow mechanism where the air is not circulated. As you can see over here, the room air is entering from uh, this point and it is moving um, from the end of the cabinet outside after passing through the HEPA filter. And similarly, the air that is entering into the workstation, it is that contaminated air is also passing uh, from the second column uh, into the uh, with the help of an exhaust system it is moving outside. So they have a single pass airflow mechanism where air is not circulated and these differ from type B cabinets uh, in that they don't require a dedicated ducted uh, exhaust system and uh, uh, type C cabinets uh, they can work for an extended duration uh, to increase operator protection in the case of exhaust failure and can even run without the exhaust at all. And uh, these type of cabinets, they have a convertible mode. They can be converted into type A and type B. Without the second uh, exhaust system or the second fan, it can uh, work like type A uh, biological safety cabinet. And in the second mode where it has two uh, exhaust systems available, so it works exactly like type B cabinet. So uh, in this way, uh, these are comparatively uh, better than uh, type B cabinets uh, because we can easily convert it into different modes, uh, uh, mode of systems and they have a better exhaust system in comparison to the type B cabinet because they do not need a ducted uh, exhaust system. So that was uh, about uh, type C1 uh, uh, in category of class 2 biological safety cabinet. Class 3 biological safety cabinet, which is also known as glove box, is a total containment system. Uh, this is the picture of uh, class 3 safety cabinet. 
this is the section where you can put your hands inside the cabinet in order to work with the uh, infectious agents or any uh, material that you need to work with so uh, this is the display panel or the control panel this is the power switch and this is a pass box so you will open it uh, you will place anything that you want to uh, put inside the safety cabinet because otherwise there is no uh, system from where you can enter any material that you are going to use so this is a pass box and uh, it has a pressure meter over here and these are the glove section from where you can uh, enter your hands for working and this picture depicts the airflow pattern of the glove box system so the room air will enter uh, from this point after passing through the HEPA filter the air will uh, HEPA filtered uh, air will enter into the safety cabinet and uh, this is your area where your infectious or any uh, agent uh, a hazardous agent that you are working with will be present so the unfiltered or the contaminated air which is under negative pressure it will move towards the uh, HEPA filter where it will pass through the HEPA filter so that the environment is also protected so this is the basic airflow pattern of the glove box system Talking about clean benches, that includes horizontal uh, laminar flow hood and vertical laminar flow hood. These laminar flow hoods, they are not biological safety cabinets and these devices do not provide protection to the workers. So if the aim of your experiment is to provide protection only to your product, then you can easily opt for horizontal or vertical flow hoods. Uh, they are designed to provide a sterile environment to protect the product. Air that is potentially contaminated with infectious agents, they should, it, uh, it may cause a threat to the user uh, and it should not be, uh, these type of material should not be handled uh, if you are uh, selecting laminar flow hoods. So they should only be used for work with non-infectious materials such as if you want to do media preparation then you can opt for either horizontal or laminar uh, flow hoods. They should never be used with any potentially infectious material, any toxins, volatile chemicals or material that may cause hypersensitivity to the uh, worker. So when you can choose horizontal uh, flow hood or the vertical flow hood, it depends on your application requirement. If your application requires less turbulence uh, on the work surface, uh, although both horizontal and uh, vertical laminar flow hoods, they produce very little turbulence, but horizontal uh, laminar flow may render slightly less turbulence as air flow does not hit any obstruction until exiting the fume hood as opposed to the vertical flow hood that uh, vertical flow hitting the bottom of the unit as uh, you can see over here uh, if I highlight this point this area because it has a HEPA filter on the top of the uh, laminar flow hood so airflow pattern is vertical so it is hitting the bottom of the uh, unit and here the airflow pattern because the HEPA filter is present over here so the airflow pattern is horizontal so you will be using primarily small utensils and equipment that will not cause airflow disturbance in the horizontal laminar uh, flow because if you will be using large equipment within the path of horizontal airflow this if the instruments are large or the equipments are large so it will disturb the horizontal airflow pattern and it may cause greater turbulence so you need the most control over contamination uh, then hands and gloves they are positioned downstream of the sample in horizontal flow therefore greater contamination protection is possible in horizontal uh, within uh, the horizontal laminar flow and uh, if your application necessitates uh, large equipment usage on the work surface uh, so uh, you can opt for vertical laminar flow because vertical flow does not produce as much turbulence uh, when hitting large items within the flow as opposed to the disturbance created in the horizontal flow so your application requires uh, if your application requires that uh, you will be using soldering fume uh, your application uh, requires that soldering fumes or fine powders be used uh, so soldering vapors can be toxic due to the presence of metal oxides or an acidic fumes from the flux 
so only use laminar flow boards for handling non hazardous powders or uh, that is being generated on the work surface and you need a taller larger work space because the filters they are generally positioned on top of vertical laminar flow board there is greater height available for work surface uh, if you are working uh, in vertical laminar flow board so the main difference if your equipments or instruments are more in height so you can opt for vertical in order to avoid any kind of turbulence and if you want to use the small utensils uh, you can opt for horizontal and uh, you can uh, if your aim of the experiment is to provide protection only to your product then you can opt for horizontal and vertical and uh, if you are dealing with infectious agents you are dealing with toxic vapors fumes then don't opt for vertical or horizontal and don't opt for the flow boards because it can cause uh, potential damage to the uh, user this is a generalized uh, layout of a cell culture hood uh, these are some of the basic things uh, that are required when you are working uh, in cell culture hood one is the pipetter we also need some micro pipettes and uh, reagent bottles that contain your required media your cell culture flask these are glass pipettes you can also use disposable pipettes and you need to have a waste container and here as you can see this is a container for liquid waste similarly you can also have a container for the solid waste so that was about uh, the biological safety cabinets now coming towards the second most important uh, equipment in the cell culture lab which is uh, incubator so there are two basic types of incubators one is the dry uh, incubator and the other one are humid uh, carbon dioxide incubators and uh, most of the time uh, the recommendation uh, is to use humid carbon dioxide incubators and these humid carbon dioxide incubators are also expensive uh, in terms of cost so in comparison to humid carbon dioxide incubators i, I have discussed in the last slide that humid carbon dioxide incubators are costly uh, the dry incubators they are more economical uh, but one thing that uh, the dry incubators need is that they require the cell cultures to be incubated in sealed flask in order to prevent evaporation because one problem with the dry incubators if uh, is that if you do not seal your cell cultures uh, cell culture flask or your plates then because they are uh, they do not have that humidity condition available or that option available so your uh, media will easily get evaporated and your cells uh, condition can uh, it can damage uh, your cells and you will not be able to get the ideal conditions in your cell culture incubator so you need to uh, seal your cell culture flask in order to prevent evaporation secondly if you want to use dry incubators then you need to place uh, some container that contains the water in it in order to mimic the condition of the humid carbon dioxide incubator in order to provide humidity in in the incubator although that uh, water container will not provide the ideal uh, humidity condition uh, that is uh, that you can obtain in the humid carbon dioxide incubator but it can at least uh, somewhat uh, mimic uh, the uh, humid conditions for the cells that is why the dry incubators are comparatively cheaper than the human carbon dioxide incubators so uh, this is what i was discussing that placing a water dish uh, in dry incubators can provide some humidity but obviously they do not allow precise control of uh, the conditions uh, atmospheric conditions in the incubator any uh, potentially harmful aerosols they can escape from the containment of the laboratory unless the room air pressure is negative to the adjacent non laboratory area and as a general rule air flow uh, uh, air should flow from low hazard uh, low hazard area to the high hazard area and uh, we were also discussing about the negative air pressure when we were uh, discussing about uh, biological safety cabinets so let me explain in detail what negative and uh, positive air pressure uh, means 
So uh, if we talk about the positive air pressure clean room, so this means that air pressure inside your clean room, it is greater than the pressure outside of it. And this is achieved by uh, pumping clean filtered air into the clean room and uh, generally through the ceiling. And positive pressure is used in clean rooms where priority is keeping any possible germs or contaminants out of the clean room. So in the event uh, that there was a leak or there is some door accidentally opened, so the clean air would be forced out of the clean room rather than unfiltered air being allowed into the clean room. So uh, this works somewhat similarly to deflating a balloon. If I give you an example that when you untie a balloon or you pop it, air rushes out because the air pressure in the balloon is higher than the pressure of the ambient air. So positive pressure clean rooms, they are used primarily for industries where clean room function uh, is to keep the product clean and safe from uh, particulates uh, like in the, uh, for example, microelectronic industry where even the tiniest particle uh, can damage the integrity of the microchips being manufactured. And same is the case with uh, uh, when you are uh, working in a cell culture laboratory, you need to maintain proper positive and negative air pressure according to your requirement. And uh, talking about the negative air pressure uh, clean rooms, so uh, in comparison to the uh, positive air pressure clean rooms, in negative air pressure uh, rooms, the air pressure in the room is lower than the pressure outside of the room. And generally, this is achieved by filtering air out of the room. And in most situations, air enters through filters near the floor and then is sucked out through filters in the room ceiling. Negative uh, air pressure uh, is used in clean rooms where the goal is to keep any possible contamination from escaping the clean room. So windows and doors have to be completely sealed and by having a low pressure, the air outside the clean room is likely to flow into it rather than out of it. And uh, if I give you an example of negative air pressure, uh, so uh, take an example of an empty cup that you set in a bucket of water and if you push the cup into the water right side up, water flows in the, uh, into the cup because it has lower pressure than the water. So the negative pressure clean, uh, clean room is like the empty uh, cup uh, here. And these negative air pressure clean rooms, they are used uh, in industries that manufacture pharmaceutical products, uh, do biochemical testing. They are also used in hospitals to quarantine seriously contagious uh, patients and any air that flows out of the room has to first flow out of the out of filter out of a filter ensuring that no contaminants can escape so this was about the uh, how the positive and negative uh, air pressure works so ideally a tissue culture laboratory should be at positive pressure relative to surrounding work area to avoid any influx of contaminated air from outside. And the tissue culture rooms that specifically involves the use of biohazardous agents shall be negative. So this is a generalized uh, uh, rule for working in tissue culture lab. And uh, if you will follow uh, this while designing the tissue culture laboratories, you will uh, get ideal conditions for working uh, with different types of cultures. Okay, so this is a pictorial representation uh, of a small tissue culture lab. And as you can see uh, this layout over here, this is the main entry of a tissue culture lab, which is the double door uh, asymmetric entry system uh, in order to uh, protect the uh, direct entry of any personal into the cell culture lab so that uh, the airflow inside the uh, tissue culture laboratory is not disturbed. So uh, the personal uh, laboratory personnel will enter from this door and after closing this door, then uh, the second door will be opened. So this is a double door entry system. Over here, uh, after entering into the cell culture uh, laboratory, there is uh, a sink area or you can say there is a washing area where multiple sinks are present. Uh, we have a drying oven over here 
and uh, deionized water supply also exist in the sink area then we have in the center uh, area we have cell counters available we have centrifuge facility uh, water bath uh, water purifier and sink then on the uh, left side uh, refrigerator and freezer uh, is available and uh, bench with a uh, shelf for a uh, shelf and uh, there is cryo freezer and uh, we have liquid uh, carbon dioxide cylinders with automatic changeovers uh, are present over uh, here on the left side um, moving on towards the right side uh, autoclave is uh, present in this area sterilizing oven this is a storage rack where you can store uh, your glasswares and your uh, any other material uh, that you need to work uh, within the cell culture lab then at the end uh, of the lab uh, not at the end but farthest uh, from the main entry area we have uh, the regular incubator humid carbon dioxide incubator and we have class 2 biological safety cabinet and a service cart to place uh, your basket and other uh, things when uh, you are working in the safety cabinet. So why this uh, safety cabinet is placed uh, far from the uh, main entry door? Because we need to maintain the airflow uh, pattern properly uh, in the safety cabinet. If it is placed near the uh, main entry door and if we do not have a double door entry system, it uh, most probably disturb the airflow pattern of the uh, biosafety cabinet and this airflow pattern disturbance can create contamination problems so this is a small tissue culture uh, lab design with almost all uh, facilities available to uh, work properly in the cell culture uh, lab and uh, this is um, a comparatively bigger cell culture facility with an adjacent preparation room and uh, this is a separate preparation area where we have a double door entry system just like the uh, small cell culture lab system and here in the preparation area we have freezers and refrigerators uh, we have in the center uh, storage racks available we have washing area over here bench top autoclave and uh, drying oven uh, and preparation this is the preparation area liquid nitrogen storage is also available over here and uh, we have cylinders uh, liquid carbon dioxide cylinders with automatic change over all and carbon dioxide supply all are present in the uh, adjacent preparation uh, room with the uh, entry uh, the entry into the main uh, culture area is uh, through that action preparation rooms so you can easily move from this uh, preparation room into the main cell culture area so in this area we have uh, a comparatively bigger microscope room uh, where, where you can easily observe your cells we have a room dedicated room for uh, incubation of our cells which is maintained at 37 degrees centigrade because we have uh, proper space available to maintain separate rooms for these kinds of conditions in comparison to the small cell culture area and then we have uh, similarly uh, uh, farthest from the main door uh, we have laminar flows uh, flow cabinets available uh, this is the service cart in the center we have cell counters similar to the small cell culture lab design inverted microscopes we have sink at the side we have freezers and refrigerators and on the right side we have similarly uh, carbon dioxide incubators um, available so all the facilities they are available uh, uh, in the center area for proper cell culture work and in the preparation area we can do the washing uh, we can do autoclaving and uh, uh, we have the preparation area for making uh, any media and uh, similarly we have separate uh, rooms available for uh, microscopy and for incubation of our cells so this is a cell culture lab with proper uh, space available so that we can maintain separate rooms for separate uh, applications so it all depends on your space and facility uh, availability that whether you will design a small cell culture lab or a medium scale cell culture laboratory or a large scale cell culture laboratory so that was about the uh, lab designing or layout of a tissue culture lab 
Summarizing the lecture, uh, we have discussed about the cell culture herds that provides aseptic conditions when we are working in cell culture lamp. The laminar flow herds, uh, vertical and horizontal, they only provide product, uh, product protection. And uh, the tissue culture lamp should be maintained at positive pressure relative uh, to the surrounding work area in order to avoid any influx of contaminated air from outside and the tissue culture wounds that involve the use of biohazardous agents, they should be at negative air pressure. So overall, uh, that was about the cell culture lab design. I hope I have uh, covered uh, all the major uh, components of a cell culture lab design, but uh, still, if you have any questions, uh, you can um, uh, contact on my email, which I'll be uh, showing you in the next slide. Thank you very much for listening uh, to this lecture. And uh, if you have any uh, questions related to uh, this lecture, you can uh, contact me on my email address mentioned over here. And thank you very much. Take care.